Hi, everybody. Hello. Hopefully you're just starting to come in now. We can see the numbers uh, picking up. So hi, everybody. Good evening. As you start to join, it would be lovely if you can tell us where you're joining from so we can see how international uh, we are. So if you're just coming in now, there is a chat button. Should be a, you should be able to find chat at the bottom of your screen. And uh, if you'd like to post in there and tell us where you're joining us from, that would be marvellous. Just say hello. Uh, let's know how you're feeling this evening. So, yes, uh, officially welcome. Thank you very much for joining our workshop this evening. I'm Claire from Colt Pens, and our workshop will be led by the marvellous Jenny Muncaster, who will be introducing us to the wonderful world of System 3 acrylics and pouring and mixing things together and seeing what comes out the other side, which is very exciting. And I have had a, a go at this myself, and it was uh, wonderful. So I'll be handing over to Jenny in just a moment. Uh, but before I do, we've got the usual bits of, uh, of housekeeping to cover. So. Uh, the session is being recorded, but don't panic, your, your cameras are and your sound is definitely switched off for the duration of the session. Um, but if you do have any questions, we do love them. So please post them. You can use the chat function that I said that was at the bottom, um, or you can use the Q&A that's also at the bottom of the screen. Either way, uh, we will attempt to answer your questions. So I will be doing that. And Anna from the Cop Pens team is here. And Carly is here from Daily Round as well. So between us, we will make sure we have you covered. Um, oh, and hang on. Sorry, we've got chat disabled again. I'm going to ask Anna. Sorry about this. I'm going to ask Anna to have a look and see if she can enable it. Bear with us uh, and we will get chat on and then we'll, we'll see all your lovely messages uh, flowing through. So sorry, um, small technical hitch uh, that we will resolve uh, very shortly. So, yes, as I was saying, uh, we will be here answering your questions. We love the questions, so please keep them coming. And I think Jenny just mentioned before that, that there's lots uh, about what we're doing this evening. It's kind of just see, seeing how it works. So the more questions, the better, I think, to understand how you can do this. Hello, chat working. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, keep those questions coming. And I will gently interrupt Jenny as we go through. Uh, so we can uh, get answer some of those questions hopefully live as well. Uh, we think the session is going to last up to an hour, sort of see how we go. Hello, hello, love you all the messages. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we think we'll be about an hour. So I'm going to hand over to Jenny now. And I think most people will know you, Jenny, if they've been on our workshops before. But let me switch over. And I think it's probably still worth you telling us a little bit about yourself and giving some background and introduction um and then we can talk about hairs so we'll come back to that in a minute <laughs> hi good evening everybody um well, it seems a few familiar names and uh yeah mary who's come on quite a few now that's brilliant it's lovely to see you all um thanks for joining yes yeah, so i'm jenny jenny moncaster and um I'm a professional artist and I work from the Colour Factory Studios down in Winchester in Hampshire. So if anybody's ever near Winchester, do pop in. Uh, we are open to the public. We've got a lovely gallery and we teach as well. So as artists, we share our passion for art and we have an amazing uh, workshop, bespoke workshop where people come and learn all sorts of different skills from painting and drawing to jewellery making as well, silversmithing, all sorts of things that go on here. But my speciality, uh, the thing that I love most are acrylics. Oh my God, so versatile, so many things that you can do with acrylics. Um, but I kind of like all sorts of things. So I, I suppose I call myself a mixed media artist because I do like to play around with all sorts of different materials, whether it be uh, the latest resins or, or texture paste and kind of incorporate all of these things into my artwork and really kind of play around and have fun with art materials themselves. So I'm really lucky enough to work with the guys at Dale around me and get my hands on some amazing materials and one of the things that I'm most in love with are the System 3 family of acrylics. And that's what we're going to be looking at. 
But in depth, we are going to be concentrating, as um, Claire said, on fluid, on fluid acrylics and what it can do. And mixed with a pouring medium, we are going to create. I say we, I think it might be down to me tonight, but <laughs> I hope that you're going to have a go with this afterwards because it is so much fun. It is so addictive. It comes with a bit of a warning. You are going to love it. So here I am from the Colour Factory down in Winchester in Hampshire. And um, yeah, we're going to have a bit of fun for the next hour or more. Amazing. And it's worth saying we've, we, we've, we've done some other workshops on System 3 with different products, um, which we'll share with everybody in the chat as well. They're on our YouTube channel. So Jenny's done a brilliant job on those. And I'm, I'm going to interrupt for one second just to ask you to talk to us about hairs. Um, because yes, before before we get into the workshop, just a little update on hairs that you were telling me about before we started, and oh. um, it was it's very exciting. Oh, it was a, it was amazing commission. So I kind of went in for it was a bit of a competition, really, quite a few months ago to paint a six foot hair, so a a rabbit hair, not a hair hair. So a six foot hair, um, and it was a charity, it was raising money for charity, and I was sponsored um, by the university to paint this hair. And I actually used System 3 acrylics to paint the hair. And actually, if you go onto my Instagram, it's catalogued really well, the process of the painting and all the different layers, using lots of the techniques that I use in my work. So lots of layering, lots of patterns, stencils, techniques with water that we've actually done on one of our workshops with you guys as well so lots of those techniques I used um, to decorate and paint my hair which was called be your beautiful self and I I kind of think you know it's all about the layers of our personality uh, pattern color sometimes we're we're soft and gentle and other times we're colorful and punchy and vibrant and it's all about the layers that make us up but in fact, it was the auction of 30 hairs for the Murray Parish Trust last night. It was last night, drank a bit of champagne and, um, oh, my God, delighted that my hair was bid on by a private bidder and went for £6,200 for charity. Oh, my God. Congratulations, because that is amazing. It did look glorious. I'm just uh, I'm just going to share a couple of links. But it yeah, it looked and the one you did looked amazing. So brilliant job. Very, yeah, that was, it was really, really great fun. It was, a, it was a great project to be involved with. And, you know, again, using the System 3 acrylic. So great for outdoors, you know. So how how brilliant is that colour and pattern on a six foot hair? What's not, what's not to love about that? So um, hairs, should we, should we crack on? <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's move on from hairs for now. We may come back to it. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, I, I really hope that I'm going to inspire you tonight with lots of fun techniques for acrylic pouring. But I'm just going to remind you. So my big passion, as I said, I've got them here, the family of System 3 acrylics that we've done a few workshops with with you guys at Cult Pens already. So we've got the System 3 ink, really, really fluid, ink-like, absolutely amazing pigment. We've got the original acrylic, nice and buttery, so probably something, a paint that most uh, people are familiar with. And then we've got the heavy body. This is the last workshop that I think I did with you guys. The heavy body, lovely, meaty texture paint, really, really good for using with a palette knife. You can create lots of peaks and uh, good for impasto work, really, really fab. But we're going to be concentrating on the fourth member of the little family here. And this is fluid acrylic. I, I love this stuff. It's fairly new. And I just think with that family of paints, it's absolutely brilliant. If I was on a desert island, I would just grab a few colours of each of these. If I just had a little bag, I would grab some of these, all of them together. I'd use them all together. And I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of some artwork that I've done using whoop, using that family of paint together. So the ink, the fluid, the original and the heavy body. Look, that's just a few colours in those products. 
and you can achieve all sorts of different effects. So they are great fun to do. We've got some lovely um, three-dimensional work here with the heavy body. We've got some dotty, spotty, and some lines that I've used the tube with. So we can draw with the fluid out of the tube, which I'm gonna come on to, as well as incorporating it with a medium to do pores. It's very highly pigmented. I'm using inks, the original all together to create artworks like this. So just with a few colors, I love that. That's the family of system three used together. But today we're not gonna use the whole family. We're just gonna concentrate on fluid. So, um, and it comes in, whoop. <laughs> I've got, I've got, to start, honestly, if you, should, if you could see my desk here, it's literally full of tubes and bottles and all sorts of things. But you can see it comes in a 29 and a half mil tube like this, which I use all the time. So I have quite a few of these. I can pop it in my pocket, take it sketching with me. We can use it like paint. We can squeeze it out the tube and draw and write with it, like sort of writing icing, which I'm going to show you in a minute. If you are, have got a lot of artwork to do, like the artwork behind me, then I'd go for the bigger ones. But I think these are great to start off with. So I'm going to take my camera overhead and do some little demos with the fluid. And I'm going to show you how we're going to mix up our colour with the fluid and our pouring medium. There we go. Oh, that's big and little, isn't it? <laughs> that's a very big pot of pouring medium. So we've got our fluid and our pouring medium. We're going to mix those together. I'm going to talk to you about the recipe, how easy it is to do. Loads of different techniques. You can see the artwork behind me here. I'm going to do mini versions of kind of all of these and a few more if we've got time. So I'm going to take the camera overhead and we'll talk it. about fluid art. Acrylic I love pour. that you're talking about the recipe because I feel like we're having our own version of the bake off. So oh, we're, yeah, having yeah. we're having an art off. <laughs> I've got my <laughs> apron on, haven't I? Look at that one. <laughs> like a, yeah. Okay. Oh, look, there's one. There's one already done. So look at me. And, we're talking about the first, bake off. Uh, this is our first workshop featuring a roasting tin. <laughs> so excellent. And you've also had some previous firsts with cotton buds scourers other kitchen implements so you're getting a reputation for this anyway oh time my now. goodness everything and anything you're right okay look here's a little piece already but what I'm going to talk about is what do we need when we start uh, no actually do you know what I'm going to talk about I was going to talk about those little tubes so let's just get that out the way and I've got here, just because I think it will show up a little bit more, I've got some black um, paper here. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, you know, I've been quite, I've got a box here and it's just going to raise this up nice and high so the camera can really, really see. Okay. So I'm going to take one of my tubes. So we've got a few of these. I think these come in packs of six and 10. Am I right there, these? You are, you are. We will share the link any second now. I've got a few of these. I'm gonna show you how it comes out of the tube because I love these. Okay, let's take, um, so it comes with a little nozzle and this is unique to the 20, 29 and a half mil. Oh, hang on a minute. I've, oh, hang on, I've gone off. Can you see me still? Yeah, we've still got you. Can you really? So my screen, hang on a minute. Okay. So I've just got Don't worry, we can, we can still see um, your, the hands-on camera. Can you? How do I yep. get back? Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, I I'm back. You You're back? Okay. Hang on a minute. I'm just going to do a very quick... Okay, so let's get the tubes out. Can we see here? So I'm yeah, gonna we've got you. Ooh, got me back. So can you see it coming out? Yeah. Like that. So that's pressing quite firmly. I'm gonna do another one and press a little bit less. So we're getting a thinner line. And then even less. And also we can get a broken line as well. I don't know if you can see this, it's almost like a stitch line. So if I drag the nozzle, it's like Without a little- putting any, you're, not, yeah. you're not putting any pressure on there, you're just dragging We're it. hardly, just squeezing yeah. and dragging the tube. So 
I love the way that we can actually use this like a drawing tool and also dots. So it's great for dotting, spotting. And I use this technique a lot in my artwork. So decorating almost like mandalas here. So I can go really, really, really tiny with that if I want to as well. Really, really tiny. Can you see? So you can really get quite a lot of control using that tube. It's very, very easy to do. Um, and I love that. So obviously it comes in lots of different colors as well. You can take the nozzle off completely so you can empty the color out. And we can also put water with it and we can use it like paint. So it is paint in a tube that is very, very highly pigmented that we can use with our other colors as well. And we can mix it and um, we can mix it together like any other paint. And it just does some really um, fantastic things. So um, yeah, so it's great when you're using it with the other products. So with the inks and the acrylics, um, the heavy body and the original as well. So you can mix it all together. So that tube, I love it. I use it for all sorts of different things. So and does it blend? Would it, if you're mixing it with other colors, will it blend like a normal yeah. paint? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it blends with it all. Oh, I wonder if I can show you that. I'll, I'll just do a little bit on here. Yeah, let's, that's a good point. So let's do a little bit of red. Let's do a little bit of yellow. So this is on my system three paper, actually. And look. Okay. So we can almost use it. The pigment is so strong. It's unbelievable. It's it's the pigment load in the paint is kind of like unlike any other. But and yet it has the properties of fluid. So it's it's going to ma maintain its depth of color and vibrancy. But look at that. I just love I mean, it's so the color is unbelievable. I mean, I've also used this as as a watercolor product as well. So because the pigment's so strong, we can use it. Um, you know, like watercolour, and then I'm going to go on to look at this, Woo, over the top again. Really, really fantastic. So we can use these in so many different ways. We can just take a little bit of colour or a little bit of the product, paint a tiny, tiny little blob like that. And look at that. I can even see the colour underneath. Yeah, so we can use it like any other paint but we can also use it out of the tube as well, which I absolutely love, incredibly versatile. I just want to put a bit on here now. So I, I would take a few tubes of this out with me sketching with my little uh, water spritzer and um, use it like paint as well, but also draw with it as well. So love those, absolutely love those little tubes. And, um, but I'm going to show you, we're going to concentrate on fluid art and we're going to mix it with the um, De La Rowney pouring medium. So that's what we're going to do next. But I do paint with these as well. So perfect to mix with the other products, with the ink and the other paints as well. So they work really well together. You can absolutely intermix all of them. But these are lovely. You know, take a few, put them in your bag or your pocket and you're off sketching. So there we go. I'm going to put that to one side for now and um, let's get mixing. So let's get that recipe going for us now. I've got, I've got all sorts of things everywhere, if you could see me. OK, move, I'm going to move my tray out of the way for a minute. Look, I've got plastic down on the table because it does get a little bit messy. So let's take our pouring medium now and let's talk about the mix. Um, and we'll mix a color and then I'll talk to you about some of the other things that we might use and need to pour on and to create some of our art. So the, I'll take some from my bigger tube here as well. So the mix recommended for fluid art, acrylic pouring. So that's creating our lovely effects like this, which we're gonna come on to is a five to one mix. So five parts pouring medium, and uh, one part paint, yeah, five to one. And there are lots of different ways to measure it. Um, when I'm doing it, look at me, and I've got my kitchen scales out now because, because I do this so much, 
I've got my kitchen scales at the studio and I just find it really easy to do. You could just, I mean, to be honest, you could probably do it by eye. And it's all about what that mix feels like, which I'll come on to in a minute. But like I've even got a cup and I've just worked out, well, that's five parts and that's one part. So you can just follow your little lines. But I think using some kitchen scales works really well for me. So I'm going to zero my amount. So five to one, I'm going to do, let's think 50. So I'm going to go up to 50. Mm. Bit more, bit more. Am I going to make it? Ugh. 48. 50. Are you about to flood? That, we, hmm? Are you about to overflow in the cup? I hope not. So what's that then? 50. Um, 50 and then five parts. So we've got, in a minute. So we want 10 mil, don't we? So yeah. I've gone over a little bit. So I'm going to put that back to zero and I'm going to put my 10 mil in. Let's do the red. That's such an amazing colour. Isn't that incredible? There we go. 10. 10. It always does. It's like when you're filling your petrol, isn't it? And then you it's go too over. too much, that. isn't it? The sensitivity. There we go. Yeah. And what's amazing about this, um, the paint and the pouring medium is because the paint, the fluid colour is already fluid. It's going to mix in almost immediately. So all I need to do, look, is a little twiddle with my stick like that. And we're going to get a complete mix. Look, it's already done. It's lovely. Now, some other products that I've used were mixing standard acrylics into pouring medium, and it takes a long time to get the mix. And because what they call the, they call it the rheology of the fluid is the same consistency as the pouring medium. So it mixes almost immediately. So that's another good thing about uh, Dale Rowney fluid. Look, we've already got our mix, perfect. I love that. What's the rheology? I learned that word from the I lab. Love that. <laughs> I thought it was consistency, but I think rheology means the oh, same thing and a bit more, a bit more scientific. So it so they'll mix together really well because they are completely the same. Um, the rheology is the same. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. So no, let's we've, we've had a question. Easy. Now you're not measuring. I can distract you slightly with the question. Yeah, sorry. Um, I got a bit, bit mathematical then. It's not so as if, difficult as I was. <laughs> I was uh, my son just tried to ring me. That was why my screen went off. I go, do not ring me. That is why I went a bit funny then. <laughs> you're all right. You're all good. Um, someone's just asked, and you might not have done this. I don't know. If you mix the uh, the acrylic with water, are you able to use it with a dip pen? If you, yes, yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, that's the fluid acrylic. Yeah. Yes, I think you are. And I think on each product, so we've got the System 3 ink, we've got the fluid acrylic as well. Um, I have got a little image on here. Can you see? It suggests how we can use the product. I think we need to double, double check. Um, it's obviously pouring, paintbrush, palette knife. And I've got a little pen here as well. And I'm not sure yeah. if it's a big pen or a, but I think most of these products you can use. Yeah, I would expect it to because you can't, yeah. like the same way you can clean your paintbrush, you can, you can clean off the dip pen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're all water-based. They're all safe to use. Everything washes out with water. So, you know, it's super easy. Really, really good. So um, when, some, someone else was asking a question. Sorry. Yeah. I'll stop interrupting you. Let let yeah, let you get on. Do. But asking a question about um about sort of three D images. It looks like three D from the, the question. So I think they're asking about how whether or not the paint can be built up in layers and hardened to create to create a finish. 
in in terms of the um oh yeah okay so using this alone without the pouring medium um you can yes it does it sits proud on the paper so the more the more product that you push out of the pen you're going to get a lovely 3d almost like a button or pin head sticking up on the paper you might even have a little example behind me so I was going to show you ladies that you're completely right. And where is it? But I've got all these trays of bits. Look, this is like a game. Let's try and find where in here I will have examples of using the fluid acrylic straight out of the tube. And you can see it's sitting, oh, sitting proud. Can you see here? Let's oh, yeah. find another one that's a bit easier to see. And would that be that product that you've just had, Jenny? That would you've you've covered it in that paint? Would that be durable then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you yeah. were painting an everyday object or something that you were going to keep using, you'd think that yeah. would last once once it's sort of set hard. Yeah, that would that's going to last well. Definitely good for outdoor use. So these are all the paints that I've used on my hair which is going to sit in the garden indefinitely. That's that's its home. The animal so, hair, not your hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not the hair on your hair. But can you see how with this the tube of the white fluid, I've already done a pour, a mix. That's dry. That's the background. And on top, I've used my fluid uh, nozzle nib to squeeze and create these little flowers that sit on top of my background. So I've used fluid in two different ways here. And I am going to come on to that and show you a little bit of that later on. So, and again, that is a really good example of how we can draw and create pattern straight out of the the nib from the, it's more of a nozzle. It's not so much a nib, it's more of a nozzle. But I love that. It's weird. Can you show us the wallet again? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so is it is it soft so finish, this, or is it is it hard when you've painted on it's kind of has a flexibility so whatever surface mm. you're pouring on which i am <laughs> there's so many questions aren't there Sorry. I mean, a session on this no it's good so this was an acrylic pour that i did on some canvas cut the canvas from the frame and I, this is like a little prototype, actually, of an idea that I love. There's right. so much. I thought it's almost like a fabric or a leather. Yeah. So I've painted the back and put some little press studs on, and it's become my little um, business card holder. So that is adorable. It's, it's flexible. Can you see? It's yeah. really flex. So depending on the surface, it's got a sort of plasticky, it's acrylic. So yeah. it's flexible. It's water, it's water resistant. Um, so that's on canvas that I that is very flexible. I can very do it. tactile. It looks very yeah. tactile, like you want to touch it as well. This is on wooden shapes, MDF shapes. It's hard, flat. So these are good for um, coasters. Well, make sure I'm in the camera there. Yeah, we've got you. So many different ways. The drips that are left over, I've peeled away and I've put inside a phone case. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. So, you know, lots and lots of different ideas. I'm going to show you, we can pour on canvas board. So canvas board is good for pouring on. We can pour on canvas paper. So that's got the flexibility. Yeah. What else have you? Oh, look, I've got a little feather, little feather there. That's all done with the, the paints here. Um, yep, yeah, MDF, MDF board. Um, even like your little leftovers. Pop these on a little. You can encase them and make them into jewelry. So these are my little acrylic pour peels. So this is the plasticky bit. If I've got any drips left over, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I lovely. Cut them and fit them into these little um, jewelry findings. So I lots and that. lots of different ways to use it. But I am. I'll come back to that because you might have some more questions on that. But I just want to show. Yeah, yeah. We've already answered some of these questions. You can pour on all sorts of things: wood, canvas, 
even your um, cardboard packaging, that's all right to pour on. I've got a tray. I'm going to incorporate some string in my pores. Uh, pores, yeah. I've got a cone. These are the, some of the things that acrylic fluid art artists will have lying around to use in their artwork. Um, lolly sticks, really handy. We're going to be using a chain later on. So this is like a, a sink chain. Um, pots, good to have some plastic pots that we can reuse and wash out or, or uh, paper cups as well. Um, if you're as messy as I am, sometimes it's nice to have some, some gloves, but it does wash out, it's water-based. And yeah, so that's my little uh, box of tricks there that I will use um, to, to um, when, I'm, when I'm pouring, all sorts of things. Okay, but I think, I think we should get on to a pour now. Um, so I've got my box because I want to raise this up a bit. So it's really good to have something like this, a tray, something to catch the drips, because obviously we're mixing a fluid medium into a fluid paint and you're going to get some drips coming over. I, you can see I've got plastic down, but I love this. These are really inexpensive. Um, I've got a tray that I can wash out, reuse. I've had these forever and a grill over the top. So the drips are going to go underneath. Perfect. But for now, just for the demo, I want to go a little bit higher. So I'm just going to put um, my artwork on top of this box um, to really so you can get a good view on the camera. So we are going to start off. I'm just going to use a little bit of System 3 artboard here. I'm going to show you that. Um, uh, uh, actually, oh, hang on, I've lost, me, I've lost me artboard. I'll come back to that one. Yeah, artboard, really, really good to pour on. I don't know where it's gone. Anyway, System 3 artboard, cut up into pieces. Really, really good for creating um, artwork on, particularly fluid art. So, right, let's get going. The first um, technique that I'm going to show you is called a puddle pour. And let's let's start. OK, so I've put my colours into plastic bottles with nozzles like that. So I pre-mix them to that five to one ratio. You can add a little bit of water if you depending on what technique you're doing, but recommended five to one mix. Look, I've already written it on, on my bottle to remind me, this is the white, it's the Dale Rowney pouring medium and it's five to one mix, just to remind me. Yeah, I might add a little bit of water depending what technique I'm doing. Palette knife is always handy as well. So I've got my palette knife there. Okay, let's get going. I'm gonna show you a puddle pour. So this is really easy. So this is where we can get going. This is the white going on as a background squeezing it out of my nozzle. These are really handy, these bottles. Um, let's just flatten that out with my palette knife. So yeah, I put it on my box just to raise it a little bit so you can get a really good view. This is probably one of the most simplest um, little techniques. I love it, but it's so fab to see. And it's just a case of dropping color. So I'm just going to do a series of dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Even that is just mind gogglingly gorgeous seeing that color. OK, so I've got some gold here now. Again, I've got my five to one mix. So let's go in with a little bit of gold now. Again, I'm using the big tubes. You can do this um, by mixing your pouring medium with those little uh, 29 and a half mil tubes. And you can use a lolly stick to drip and drizzle. You don't need to have it in a big thing like this. And, and how yeah. long, someone's just asked the, the inevitable question, if you mix them up, how long are they going to last? In the bottle but do you know what I found if you as long as you've got a lid on and you're not exposing it to sunlight or heat it should last quite a while I mean weeks I, I would okay. loads and loads at once but you don't need to think about fresh batch a little bit and then no, remix I don't, and I then don't remix. Think, if you're if you know that you're 
doing your pours for a couple of days, I would mix up and, you know, I wouldn't leave them in cups. I, I would put them into little, you know, plastic bottles with lids. Look at that. I love it. So we're just building up airtight pump. bottles is the key thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how the pattern's emerging and it really is just a case of playing and adding. We could keep going and going with this. So now here comes the fun bit. I'm going to move my little box out of the way. We can either leave it like this or we can start because it's fluid. Let's get a little bit of movement going and swizz it around. It is absolutely delicious. Oh, just love the movement of that. Again, it is completely mesmerizing, watching the color move. And because I've got that, because we're, we're doing, we're working wet in wet. Look at that, I love it. And I have got a bit of old, um, I've got some, T-shirt here, old T-shirt, which I cut up, which I just have for my hands. So we could leave it like this or barbecue stick. You know, you can start to play around by making shape. Oh, my God, I love that. Ooh, see, this is what oh, I feel like you should be doing this as well, because it is so much fun. Oh, look, I've created some nice little shapes there. And some of these patterns remind me of old um, the inserts in old books. Oh, yes. You know those Definitely. books? Definitely, yeah. They call yeah. Them. Vintage sort of pattern print going yes. on. Lovely. And that gold is gorgeous. So that's a puddle pour. Again, you can use, you can do lots of different colours. You can, you know, vibrant colours, whatever, whatever you want to. But that's our basic puddle pour technique you know, whether or not you drag the stick through like a Mary Berry icing, a Bakewell tart, but I love that so much. We're very, we're very Bake Off today. And actually someone's <laughs> just asking, those bottles that you've done your mixing in, where have you got those from? Oh, I've got them online. The, the, the place beginning with A that we... Yes, I know, I wasn't yeah. going to say, but yes. No, that's fine. Someone, someone suggested that anyway. <laughs> just, just, just has basic plastic bottles to mix up in, right? And it will continue to do a little bit of movement. Oh, look at that. Some amazing sort of layering going on here as well as the black meets the white, a little bit of gray. Gorgeous. That gold is just, I don't know if the camera Fabulous. can see it up. It's so Yeah, metallic. I think the gold is just, I don't know if you can hold it up any closer because I don't think we're getting the full, I've seen the gold like in the flesh. I don't think it's quite coming across as shiny on camera. It is, is it? Sometimes in the light, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that to one side for now. And we're going to do another one. We're going to do something else. So these, these techniques come quick and fast now. Let's get this on the tray. So I'm going to use those chains now. So we're going to do a chain pull. And I'm going to get a black background on. Ding, ding. So even that's nice, isn't it? This is my Jackson Pollock I'm channeling now. So we're getting just a background and we're creating um, a fluid surface for the other colours. Whatever I'm going to do next is going to sort of slip and slide into. And then again, palette knife, really handy. Let's just smooth that out. You'll get used to how much um, paint to use. So we want to try and create as little wastage as possible. So although I've got my tray here, I really am sort of being quite mindful of how much I use and it's not all going over the, the edge. So just, just, you will get used to that. Okay, so lovely surface to work on. Now, where are my chains? I think they are down here, here you go. So I've got my um, sink chains again, from the big A or, or hardware shop near you, you can get these. And um, so, so now I'm gonna put some of my white in the little cup to make it a little bit easier for the next bit that I'm gonna do. So squeeze 
a little bit of white in. And let's go with that gold and white effect. It's a little bit of gold as well. And I don't know if you remember the artwork behind me at the beginning, some really lovely lilies on black. So yes. I'm yeah. going to move this along a bit so I can pop this in. Can you see what I'm doing? I've put my chain. Yeah, we've got you. Into my white paint. Plonk it in. Don't let go. Don't let go. Otherwise, you'll have trouble fishing <laughs> that out again. So pop it in. And then I'm taking one of my lolly sticks and I'm just being careful a little bit to press my lolly stick against the side of the cup while I'm pulling the painty chain out. I just have to, can you see that in the camera there? So yes, we can, pushing, yeah. Pushing against the side. So what I don't want to do is have this chain, it's very, very long, dripping in paint. I just want it coating the bobbly bits on the chain. Can you see that? Now, what I'm gonna do now is carefully take it across and I'm gonna make a little zigzaggy wiggly shape like that. And then holding my finger as a little bit of support just above at the end, I'm then gonna pull my chain through towards me, just holding my finger and pulling it towards. Ta -da. Love that idea of the, of the wow. Let's give that a little wash. Let's try that again. So let's try that with the gold. So there's my pot of gold. Here's my chain. In it goes. Dib, 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 dib. Another lolly stick. Give it a little wiggle in that colour. Hold my stick against the chain, against the outer oh sorry the the outside or the inside of the cup because I don't want it dripping everywhere I really I just want it to cover the bobbly bits to make me a nice pattern and then I'm pinching and grabbing my chain and then I can where's this one gonna go let's have it here ding 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 whoop bring it round bring it round wiggle 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 don't let go of the end and then the same thing, I'm pulling my chain towards me. I have my finger here, it's quite good. Otherwise, otherwise, if I had didn't have my finger, I'd be tempted to pull it in all sorts of directions, but I want it to come straight towards me. So pull it towards me. And I've got a lovely lily in gold. Let's do that again. Okay. I'm not gonna wash my chain this time. So let's see what happens. I pick up a little bit of black and gold together. And we can keep going with this as much, you know, as many times as we want to, just to build up that pattern. I'll speed up because I want to show you so many things. And one more, let's go into this side. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then pull it towards me. Ding, 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 ding. Wow. Let's do one more. Let's do one more in white. So we can build it and layer it. Love it. In that chain goes and holding the stick against the side of the pot, pull the chain out. So I'm just covering those little ball bearingy bits with paint. Pinch, and I'll do a layer on top of the gold. Let's see what happens when we sort of layer it up. So we get an almost 3D effect. And let's do one. Lovely. Oh, difficult to know when to stop, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Amazing. so that's our chain pull effect. And people might be wondering if you know a little bit about fluid art, we can also incorporate a silicon oil, which is what I'm gonna do next. I haven't with these because one of the things that people look for in their pores, I wonder if I've got something that I can show you. Oh, let me just grab one of these. One of the things that people ask, oh, what about the cells? What about how do we get all these lovely mm. um, cells and bubbles? Well, that's created by silicon oil, adding silicon oil to our paint. You will get a little bit of effect without adding any silicon oil at all. And we can already see here, if I hold this one up, I haven't added any silicon oil to my paint. And can you see just by mixing- You've got a couple of spots there, yeah. 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 Start to come through a little bit more in time. 
So we are getting some really nice effect. If I had silicon oil mixed with this, it would really, really uh, create lots and lots of cells. But I think then it would start to um, take away the shape that mm, the chain is made. So yeah, I, from the flowers, yeah. definitely. I, I wanted that just to be without any silicon oil so you can get the effect. Mm. When that's dry, I can work into it. I could draw back into it with my fluid just straight out of the tube, which I'm going to show you later. I love the idea of when it's dry, drawing back into it with different colours. That would work really well. And okay, how long, just, to, just by way of example with that, that piece you've just done, how long will that take to dry? If So I, my workshop is very, very warm. So if I left it in the workshop, it's almost like a greenhouse, our workshop. It would dry, um, it would dry overnight. But I honestly... Touch, uh, touch dry overnight, but to completely dry, I'd recommend um, two days, 48 hours. Yeah, two days. Okay, so, right, next up, let's do, I'm just going to put a little bit of black on here. Let's do some mixing with our silicon oil, because I think you need to know about silicon oil. Um, so, I've already mixed my colours. So I'm going to get some yellow into my pre-mixed colours. So I've got some yellow. Whoop. Let's put a bit more in. I've got yellow, some phthalo blue. Bear with while I pour these out. Any, any more questions? I love that blue. Love that. Maybe but we did have a, a question about the powder in the gold, but it, I think Carly's going to try and find out the answer. Is the gold Amica powder mixed into a base colour? I know, good question, right? So we're going to yeah. try and answer, yeah. find, find out the answer to that one and, and come back. Um, so great question. I love that blue the, uh, that you've this got is, there. It's cerulean blue there. Lovely. And then I'm going to just put some more white in as well. So I'll tell you, I'm using slightly larger cups here, but i tell you what are really good are these little shop, plastic shop cups that you can get. That's the perfect size for a pour, for a little mini pour. These are great. Well worth getting a few of those if you get into this. Okay, let's grab the silicon oil now. She says, where did I put it? Honestly, if you could see this desk, I've lost myself. Here we go. Now I'm here with the other tray. So this is my silicon oil. Now I'm going to pop a lolly stick into each of these because I'm going to give them a little mix with some silicon oil. And the secret of this is one or two drops max per sort of 750 ml. So I think, yeah, one or two drops in this amount is fine. Let's put one, two, silicon going in. And this is really going to help, you'll see, create some cells. Let's put a little bit more in that one, a bit more in that one, one more drop. Okay, and just give them a really quick mix up like that. Ding, 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 ding. Like that, ready to rock and roll. Okay. So how much of the how much of the paint have you put into the so in pot? Here, I did not ask you a little bit just volume. Fifty mil. Okay, and then so fifty mil, and then 50 a mil, couple of drops of silicon drop, oil. Two drops of silicon oil. Yeah, lovely. But again, it is sort of the artist kind of whatever you feel you want to do. Um, the one thing I would say about silicon oil is that don't be tempted, as I have done in the past when I first started using silicon oil, don't think, oh, I'll put loads in because then I'm going to get more cells because that's me being sort of clever and logical. But actually, it does the opposite. So it will stop your cells if you put too much in. So less is more definitely with the silicon oil. So it's, it's actually good. It's going to last for a while. Okay, dope. Right, now I've got a little cup here on my canvas. So what I'm going to do now is a uh, flip cup. Yeah, we'll do a flip cup and we'll see what happens. So I've got my silicon oil 
in. I'm going to layer up my cup like a trifle. Oh, that one's a cerulean. Let's go with the phthalo next. Love that. So layering it up in my cup, a bit of the green. Give it a little mix before I put it in. Ding, 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 ding. And the blue. Oh, I forgot my yellow. Let's get the yellow in. Yellow. Blue. And I could even go, let's go for that again. So a little bit of white. I can't remember my order now. Let's put a bit of that blue in. The green. So I'm just trying to judge how much paint I need to cover this canvas. Ding, ding, ding. A little bit of that and a bit of yellow as well. So I'm putting quite a bit in just for this demo because I really want you to see the effect quite well in the camera. Okay, so I've got my cup. I wish I could sort of put it on the, can you see? I, just I, was, just, I was just, I was just, turn side on. Yeah, it's just gonna, yeah, it's an right. absolute mess, yeah. <laughs> can you see, so that what's happening, now this is what's interesting about our product, about the pouring medium here. This is the magic thing that stops those colors from merging and mixing together. So it keeps, the, it keeps the pigment separate. There isn't anything else in this world that will do that. You can't mix water with it or glue or anything like that. It's the pouring, it's whatever is in that pouring medium. It's the clever people in the lab. Okay, take my canvas and flip it over with my cup and uh, get, a little... I feel like this is like the turning out the tart tatan. <laughs> the caramel has worked. It might just be me thinking that at this point, but as we're going for baking references, it felt it felt appropriate. It's definitely like that. It's just a nervous bit. Well, in fact, mm. you know, maybe I need my Dale Rowney palette knife to give it a little magic tap. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Oh, you don't have to do this. I can't help it. And now let's empty and see what we've got. So you, again, you can empty the cup in so many different ways. I like, we all like to do this differently, like your creme brulee or your, what was it? Your tart, 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 tart your creme yeah. caramel. <laughs> you can lift and tilt and give it a little swizz. And then I like to give the endy bits, give them a little drizzle around. I'm going to see if I can hold this up. And because we've added silicon oil, Let's see if I can get as high as possible. Start to get the dot. Starting to get those cells coming through. And this is where you just want to sit back and watch paint dry. Marvellous. Yeah. It, it is magic. Really, really lovely. And whilst you're wiggling that, Jenny, someone's just asked about paper. Um, and could you use watercolour paper or any, any, is there anything particular you should use? System through paper, obviously. Anything I you really, anything you shouldn't, anything you think we should avoid? Non, uh, so porous isn't great. Fabric's not great. Um, and paper, do you know what? I think it will buckle. So I think you really do need something a little bit more firm and I don't know where I've put my pad of paper. I am going to find it. I think it's on the floor somewhere. My System 3 art board, which I will remind you of when I find it. I'll hold it up. I don't know what, where that's gone. Yeah, System System 3 art board, because it's, it's like a card backing, but with a really nice surface. And is a smooth surface better than anything with any undulations in it I think smooth is better yeah I think it's all right like this is a canvas so anything yeah. that's got a weave it's already been pre-primed that's yeah. good but it's not 100% necessary because your paint is going to cover because you have the opacity of the paint to cover what was underneath so um, sometimes the, the pre-primed acts as a little bit of um, whiteness you know a bit of um, yeah. helps the reflection and someone's just asked, which is made me smile, about uh, whether you could dry this with a hairdryer. And I can confirm that you can, because we had a go at that when we were with you, I think. And you could use, we were using that a little bit as well, weren't we? Just to blow paint around a little bit. 
Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm going to get my hair dryer out in a minute. Yeah, and we're going to have a go with the hair dryer and see. Um, yeah, see what we can produce with the hair dryer as well. I've got two more techniques to show you. Have we got time to do two more? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Are we okay with that? So I'm not going to add any more to that. But what you can do, I just, I won't do it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to show you what you can do is out of your um, pot is that you can then put more color on. So I'm just going around with some white and you can do all sorts of things with this. You can take a, in fact, I'm going to do this. You know, having said, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to do this, bit of string. Let's see what happens if I've got some white here. Let's put my string in the cup. Like I was doing with the chain, let's get that in, get it in, get it coated and pull that out again. And then let's just do a little whiz through like this around my wet paint. And then I'm just gonna whiz it around and pull it through and see what we get. I love that effect. It's almost like a wave. You can take a palette knife through as well. Yeah, it's very wave with those colours. Very seascape. So every time you manipulate, manipulate a layer, you get a new effect happening. I quite like that. So you can use your palette knife to great effect as well. You're not sort of mixing the paint as such, but you're um, just manipulating enough to bring another effect through. Like if I did that lots and lots of times, I'd end up with a messy sort of murky effect. But once or twice through, that palette knife can give me a great effect. I love it. So you can play around with your palette knife. Look at the cells really coming through now. Oh. Okay, so that's our dirty flip cup technique. I'm just I've got another table over here in the studio. So let's go with, I wonder if I've got another canvas here. I'm going to mix up a couple more colors. So let's see, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of magenta now. I've got some magenta in here, but I want to add some silicone to that as well. So I'm gonna add a few more, I'm gonna do this really quickly. Okay, and we're gonna try another little technique. So I've got magenta there. I've got some orange, I'm running out of cups. Ooh, there we go, let's put them in here. I've got some orange. And we're gonna do a crazy, kooky, colorful thing. A bit of orange as well. Make sure that my silicon oil is in. Because I want to finish off with the hair dryer technique. Give that a little swizz around. And I need some black as well. So I'm just going to get another little cup. So I wish I could, I wish you could see the studio. It's absolutely full of bottles of paint everywhere. Um, Okay, let's get a bit of black because I want to add some silicon oil into my black as well. So black goes in. A couple of drops of silicon oil in there. One or two. From that pipette, give it a little mix again. I think we've got enough colour going on there. And I've got a little bit of water in this. Let's get that away. So now I'm going to take my colours and I'm just going to do some stripes. Stripe like this. I'll do this really quick because I just want to get you to see this technique. So a bit of that green going across, a bit of the blue. Could be any colours combination. So those cups of 50 mil that you're using now, right? And then you have the little mini miniature ones, which were like the shot ones, which I'm guessing yeah, are sort yeah. of 20s or 25. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I suggest those little mini cups are fine to start off with. The mini cups. And if cups, you were doing, would you do one drop of silicon in the mini cup? Yes, yeah. And then two in the bigger one? Yeah. So that, that'd be about right. 
I think that's a good, yeah, I think that's good. So let's just use this up seeing as I've mixed it. So just want to get a few strikes going on, filling the gaps. Like that. Oh, we've got some of this blue as well. That's my favorite color, that one. Is that the phthalo, I think? Yeah, phthalo. I'm also watching this and thinking I should definitely be considering doing this with the children, although I'm sort of hesitating in my own thought as I'm thinking <laughs> that <laughs> the plastic sheeting will have to go everywhere. I know, definitely a good idea. I mean, I'm terrible. I was always, you know, covered in paint. Bath night, every night. Let's just put a little bit of white on as well, where those gaps are. So I've left a section on this side that hasn't got any paint on at all because I want to put my black on the end because I, what I want to do is try and swipe that black over the other colors and we'll see what we get. And what I need is a little bit of kitchen roll here and I'm gonna dab it in the end of the black are you picking this up okay? Because my... Yeah. Yeah. And then very, very gently, I'm going to pull that across. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it. look at the, the cells appearing. And then we get all sorts of different colours coming through. So that's a little swipe technique. And it's a bit of magic as the colours come through. So I'm, I'm doing this very, very quickly because I want to get as many techniques done as possible. I can even take a little bit more. Let's just get those edges done as well. Oh, my God. Crazy, crazy. I love how the cells are developing and they're getting bigger. So we can... I'm showing through the colours. That's incredible. I can see some lovely greens here. Again, I don't think the camera's picking the colours up quite as well. That technique is just amazing. Mm. And they're still going. <laughs> Look at that. Oh they're my God. still coming through. That's amazing. Right, I've got, I've got one more to show. So keep looking at that while I fill these up a bit more. I'm just going to say the magic of kitchen roll. <laughs> just, just incredible so we'll do one more because we've got to get that hair dryer technique in as well so I'm just refilling my colours here I wish I, yeah, I wish it could pick up as, as I can see here those colours are incredible well perhaps if you get a chance to take a photo Jenny, and send it oh, over yeah, to yeah, us. We'll Maybe do. when things have dried, yeah. it take a couple of photos. We can include those in the follow-up to everyone. So we'll we'll share the video. And if there's any any imagery, we'll share that as well. We might capture the, the colours. Uh, I mean, it looks amazing anyway. I think, yeah, you can really see it take effect. Can't you? I mean, it's, what I love about acrylic pouring, fluid art, is that it's so mesmerizing and it's kind of feel good. It's all about enjoying color. Okay, right. So I'm just putting a little bit more um, color and silicon oil in there. Okay, I'm gonna put that to one side again, over on the table. Okie dokie, right, one more canvas to go. In fact, I'm gonna do, let's do a biggie to finish off. Look at that one. Hopefully this will sort of almost fill the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this one. I'm just using my white to give my canvas a coat. So I haven't got any silicon oil in the base there. It's just uh, my mix. And I need a clean palette knife. Okay, so let's do my icing. So icing the biggest, 
biscuit here. This is your showstopper. <laughs> God, don't say that. No, as in the Bake Off showstopper's always at the end, right? So this is your showstopper. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Not to add me... any pressure. Yeah, you're making me nervous. Uh, Sorry. Right. Okay, so my white base goes on. And then it is a case of... Oh, we just lost the camera. Oh. It's just zoomed out. Put your hand in a minute. I think oh, it's, it's because it's white, isn't it? There we go, yeah. It'll yeah. come back, yeah, it'll come back, won't it? Okay, so let's do some drizzle so that camera can pick it up. A little bit of the blue. So this is a smaller version of some of those pieces that were on the back wall. Bit of green. So I'm doing some sort of wiggly lines through. Whoop. Bit of yellow. Blue, that lovely cerulean blue. Let's put some on here as well. I can't help myself. And maybe more, I've more is more. Black here. What's that? More is definitely more. <laughs> I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny bit of black across that yellow, and we'll see what happens. And I've got some more white here. So what I'm going to get my hair dryer out, but I want a little bit more white on my edges that I can blow and push over the colours that I've got. So let's put a little bit in there as well. And a little bit on there. And now I need my hair dryer. <laughs> so hair dry is good, but good with a nozzle. And that's a very thin, can you see that nozzle? Yeah. Is I can also see that you've way. used that for paint projects before. <laughs> I think all my tools are covered in paint, yeah. And then I'm going to try and direct the flow of the air to push the paint across. So let's have a little go at that. Are we ready? Let's turn on. Love it. And that's all there is to it. Isn't that just so much fun? And it's beautiful. So we could add more. Look at my hands. <laughs> <laughs> just seeing that on that. But I love this glossy. It is so white. Those pigments are incredible mm. in those paints. They are amazing. You don't lose any of the, of the colour or pigment. Um, and they will dry nice and flat as well. So they level out beautifully. I'm going to hold that up. It's gorgeous. So I kind of quite like it with that white background. But another mm. thing you can do, I'm going, to, I'm going to lift it up again on the special magic box. Because I just want to show you one more thing that I've been playing around with. And let, let's just get that a bit higher in the camera. Um, really nice idea is with my tubes is we can wiggle let's just see if we can get a bit of this going wet in wet so we can actually sort of draw into it a little bit and create more pattern if we want to it's just an interesting mm. technique so we get some really lovely line work again that's using the fluid with the nozzle so out of those little um, tubes, which I really love. Let's try another color. It's great to have that 
So you just you can use those straight onto the medium that you're using. Yeah, I I love that. It just makes that whole Is that um, the gold, Jenny. This gold, yeah. So I filled mm. that with some gold. Love it. But I love the way you get this sort of bleeding out pattern, like ink. It's almost ink like because the pigment is -like, so yeah. strong in here in the in the fluid acrylic. Yeah, it's like ink and it's giving you some amazing things. I just think that is it's it's delicious. It is almost it, it, neat, isn't it? It, it it is delicious. It really is. I love it. And look what we've done in, you know, less than an hour. Well. Yeah, less than that. We were we were talking for quite a bit, but yeah, you've done you've done those those pieces very quickly, and I know you're the That's expert. But when I and um, I had a little, I was fortunate enough to have a have a try at this, um, and I loved what I managed to do as well. And I don't consider myself creative, but I do like to have a go, and it and it was easy. And I I do think it's with with art skill I'm sure you can create more beautiful pieces but actually it's really accessible to have a have a try at so I loved it and that's that's why I'm thinking really should give this a go with the children as well and get them to have a go it's amazing and Jenny I don't know if you want to flick back to your okay, other camera that. to just then go back to the art pieces just to show everyone the pieces yeah, yeah. behind you that you'd achieve I think that would be fab Will you get to see how my messy, um, the messy studio as Hopefully. well? <laughs> Actually, you can't really see around. No, you can't, but you're safe. You're safe. Um, so, yeah, there we go. There's the, there's the finished canvas. I wonder if I can take these off, actually, and show you. Yeah. We can see that. that. one that we did. Yeah. Lovely. This is, this is a dry version. No, I can't take that off, actually of the one I've just done but in different colours. Yeah, that's fab. And it's quite it's nice to have the white space as well. Yeah, I not right not fill it. Yeah. Yeah. Fill it all in. Amazing. I want to do it. Oh, you know we're talking about those pen using the pen nib as well. Just very quickly. That one was dry and again I'm kind of using it to draw back into afterwards mm. with those little um, tubes, which I really like. So lovely. That's done on a bit of that system. Oh, look, there's my System Three art board. I hang it up there. Looking we for did it. share. We did share the link as well in the <laughs> chat. So hopefully, um, yeah. Hope hopefully everyone's seen that. I love it. Um, I so, really um, enjoyed amazing, it. Amazing, amazing as ever. Thank you. Um, so if, any more that you want to share with is that all the all the techniques for now I know you feel we could go on for ages yeah we could literally we could go on I just wanted to give you a nice sort of idea of four or five very very quickly that you know quite different yeah. that final one I love it yeah I, I, that's you know, I think the that, and just, the silicon yeah. oil is like magic into the formula isn't it it's amazing yeah 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 absolutely um, Thank you so much. So thank thank you everybody. Um, uh, so uh, just amazing as ever. Uh, Love doing these workshops um, with Jenny. Thank you so much, Jenny, for your enthusiasm. And you always make me feel like I can do it myself. Uh, and uh, which is a, an amazing amazing uh, skill to have to share with everybody. I love that. Um, so please, if anyone wants to have a go then please share your artwork with us. We love seeing that. Um, we've got Colt Pens Creative as a hashtag on social media. Um, I think you've probably got my email address. Um, we also, uh, you can use help at Colt Pens if you want to email something in. Um, we would love to see that. And if you're happy to for us to share it, we'll share it more widely, but we'll always check with you first. So yeah, we'd love to see your creations. Um, I also love Puddle Pour, and I'm going to try and uh, fit that into everyday conversation. So as ever, um uh, some new phrases from Jenny which is marvellous um you might have seen in the chat uh, Anna shared a, a code with you so if you it should be working if it's not working now it will a bit later so if you don't want to get any materials then you can get 20% discount so workshop 20 is the code to use but again get in touch um with help at cop pens if you're having any trouble uh should be live in an hour or so I think um so yeah please share your creations we will 
edit the um, video down and get that uploaded and all the bits that we need to do with that. And we should have it uh, hopefully by the end of the week. It might be early next week. Um, and we will share that back to you. If you've registered, we'll send it out. Um, we'll share it in our newsletter as well. Uh, so if you're not already signed up, you can do that on our website. So thank you very much. You can find Jenny. I think I shared the links at the beginning. Um, but look up the Colour Factory in Winchester. You can look up Jenny Muncaster on social channels and you'll come across Jenny straight away. So you can have a look at some of the creations uh, that she's done with the System 3 family, which are incredible. And also the hairs, of course. You can see Jenny's uh, hair, the animal hair, not Jenny's hair. So thank you very much again. Uh, we loved having you. We've got more workshops coming up. So uh, do follow us on social and uh, and sign up to the newsletter. We'll, that way you'll get all the information about what's coming next. But I'm going to finish the webinar now. I'll do a quick check to make sure we've answered all the questions. And I hope we can see you all again soon. And thanks, Jenny. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.